Okay, update time. I have a friend who lives in a small city called Yukaipa. It's about 20 minutes west of Morongo Casino. He asked me to cast it this weekend. That in and of itself has been pretty fun, not gonna lie. But the other obvious upside to this is that I'm just 20 minutes away from the casino. I've pretty much played every day. I just go to Morongo, come home, feed the cats, go to the gym, go to sleep. It's been going pretty well, not gonna lie. Uh, so far, I haven't lost in the past few days. Today is Monday, Labor Day, the last day of this little cat sitting vacation I'm on. And hopefully we don't break the streak. I'm about to head over there right now. Should be crazy busy, lots of action, given that obviously it's a holiday. So I figured it'd be a good day to vlog, bring you guys along and hopefully book one last win before heading back home. I'm not sure what I'm gonna play. I've been mixing it up between 1-3 and 2-5 the last few days. I think every game will probably be good, just given the nature of today. So not really sure where I'll end up, but via the magic of YouTube, you guys will know in probably like 30 seconds or less. So. Okay, so we're underway here at Morongo playing some 2-5 No Limit Hold'em. Starting off with the first hand, there's an under the gun limp and plus one opens to $20. I look down at 6-4 of diamonds on the button and make the call and the limper calls as well. This is near the bottom of my calling range for sure, but being that he only made it 20 over one limper, I don't think he's too strong here. So three ways to a flop, which comes down queen jack seven with two diamonds. Action checks to me and with six high, not a lot of showdown value, but a decent amount of equity with the flush draw. I bid out for $30, get called by plus one, who was the initial raiser. Turns the four of spades. I think at this point we actually have the best hand, but when he checks it over to me, our hand is still somewhat vulnerable. So although I don't hate checking back here, I think a bet is better. So I make it $85. He doesn't think for too long and makes the fold. He asked the dealer if we could see the river card, which ended up being a five of diamonds. It's gonna be a good day. Shortly after that, there's an under the gun limp and I make it $25 from early position with king 10 of spades, get called by the big blind and the under the gun limper. Three ways in position to a flop of 10, eight, four with two spades. So we flop top pair and a flush draw, pretty great flop. Big blind leads for $25, pretty interesting. And the under the gun player makes the call. I could get behind a raise here, but I prefer just calling in position and seeing what develops. So I put in the 25. So we're still three ways to a turn here, which is not really my favorite card, the nine of hearts. Putting up some potential two pairs and maybe even some straights. Big blind continues for $50. This time the under the gun player folds and I definitely think just calling is the right play at this point. So that's what I decide to do. The river peels off the five of spades. So we make our flush and the big blind checks it over to us. I thought for a little while here on sizing, I ended up going with 175, but after thinking about it a little while later, I think either a small bet like 80 or 90 is better or just a really big bet. Uh, perhaps an overbet. This in-between sizing, I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, anyway, he ended up making the fold and we take it down.
Next, we get pocket nines under the gun, open it up to $20, get four callers, go multi-way to a flop of king nine four, two clubs out there, one spade. Action checks to me, I put out a bet of $55, hoping to charge all kings, straight draws, flush draws, etc. But unfortunately, everyone folds, which is a little frustrating here, but hard to complain when we've already made two flushes in one set within an hour of being here. Still in the early goings here, in this next hand, the straddle's on, under the gun limps, and next to act, we pick up ace king off suit. So raise it up to $45, get called by the button, and everyone else folds. Heads up out of position to a flop of ace king full rainbow. I decide to check it, feed my opponent some rope. He's definitely the aggressive type, but it doesn't take the bait and checks it back. Turns an offsuit queen. I think at this point we have to start building the pot and just hope he has something to call down with. Make it $60, but unfortunately, no love for top two this time. We're making some hands, but it's only half the equation. So those first few hands pretty much play themselves. Nothing too out of the ordinary, I think. However, as you guys know, once in a while on this channel, there's some hands that are the complete opposite of ordinary and just make you question, what the f is going on? I decided to make a little signature sticker for these hands just to make things real clear when you're about to experience a hand that just makes you wonder, Figo for short. So, as you guys see on the top right, there's a Figo sticker. Moving forward, every time that little star is up there, some crazy shenanigans are about to go down. So here we go, there's three limpers. The cutoff makes it $15, pretty tiny raise over three limpers. The small blind calls, and I look down at queen five of spades from the big blind. Pretty garbage hand, but for such a good price, I decide to make the call, and the limpers obviously call as well. So multi-way to a flop here, which comes down queen seven deuce with two spades. So we flop top pair and the queen high flush draw. I decided to check it, and the action checks to the player on the right of the initial raiser, who I guess is the last limper. He puts out a bet, makes it $15, the button calls, the small blind calls, and when the action's back on me, I think for the most part, we're gonna have the best hand here. So I decide to raise it up to $80, get called by the middle position player and the small blind only. So three ways to a turn here, which comes pretty sexy. It's the six of spades. So we end up making our flush. The middle position player has around $150 behind and the small blind has around $400 behind. We cover both players. And I think I want to check it here, get a little deceptive, and the middle position player indeed cooperates and puts in a bet of $120, a little bit strange, leaving himself with like $30 behind. The small blind folds his cards, I decide to just get the money in. I saw a folding motion. Yeah, he didn't fold it. And as I announce all in, I notice the small blind did not actually fold. He just made a forward motion with his cards, but pulled them back at the last minute and says call to the 120 from the middle position player. So a little bit of an angle going on here. Um, the player in the small blind was uh, certainly not a strong player, didn't know some of the rules and wasn't really sure when it was his turn sometimes. So I'm not sure what this means, but I think he could be continuing with just a naked ace of spades with a pair, two pairs, sets maybe and just all kinds of other nonsense that doesn't have us beat and we could deny equity from. So not looking to fold a queen high flush in this situation, I decide to stick with a plan and move all in. If he has the ace high flush, we're getting it all in on the river anyway. So just gonna target hands that I'm ahead of and get max value while there's still value to be had. I send it in, the middle position player calls his last $30 and the small blind doesn't think too long and also makes the call. So we have a three way all in here. I just table my hand right away and the small blind seems very upset. <sighs> Visually very frustrated. So that's good news because if somehow the middle position player has a king or ace high flush, at least we can count on scooping up this side pot we've developed between ourselves and the small blind. Assuming the board doesn't pair or something crazy happens here. The river comes off an offsuit eight, so our flush should be good here. The middle position player shows king three of spades, and the small blind tables 
Ace Jack of Spades. Not really sure what's going on here. Seems a bit strange to fake frustration when there's not even any action left to be had. And uh, I guess that little fake fold angle shoot on the turn is definitely starting to make some sense now. Not gonna lie, I don't get too angry at the poker table, hardly ever, but uh, this might have been one of those exceptions. Got a little heated here, decided to go for a coffee break. Shout out to Matt, thanks for the coffee, bro. Walk around for a few minutes, shake it off, and get back to the table with my head in a better spot. I'm not really one to preach, especially considering I haven't even been playing poker for a year, but something that I think is really important is making sure your mind's right, and if you're feeling any amount of frustration or anger, I suggest just going out, either grabbing a drink or some fresh air or whatever works for you, so that way when you get back to the table you can play your best game and not be skewed by emotional, irrational thoughts. Anyway, if you guys thought that last hand was kind of crazy, this one should get two Figo stars because holy sh I didn't even take notes on it because this hand will probably be burned into my memory for the rest of my life. No exaggeration. <laughs> so here we go. There's an early position limp as there tends to be, a few more limpers, and then the button makes it $25. The small blind calls, I look down at 9-7 of diamonds. I think for the most part it's a fold, but given that it could make some pretty strong hands and I'm expecting this to go multi-way, with decent implied odds, I don't hate a call either. So I defend the big blind and three of the limpers make the call as well. So I think it was six or seven ways to the flop here, which came down 10-9-3 with a diamond. Action checks to the last limper before the button, who puts out a bet of $25. The button, who was the initial raiser, makes the call. The small blind makes the call. I make the call. The first limper makes the call. And then the second limper puts in a check raise to $150, leaving himself with a little over $200 behind. Action folds all the way back to me and this is where the hand gets a little bit strange. It's funny, I was talking to a buddy on my left and I don't remember saying this, but on the video you could hear me say, I kind of just want to send it in. I kind of just want to send it. <laughs> so something about my instincts just felt like we were ahead. The reason this check raise is so interesting is because he's representing very, very, very few hands, which normally is not a great idea when you're putting in a check raise. So let's see, pocket tens and pocket nines are probably raising preflop, maybe even pocket threes. I suspect 10-9 suited is also a raising hand for this player preflop, and we also block that having a nine ourselves. So it's pretty much pocket threes or nothing, I think. He could be overplaying a top pair type hand, but again, I think ace-10 and king-10 would be a raise. And over pairs are just not in this guy's range, I don't think. So he seems to only be repping a set of threes, not really much else. However, that's just in the department of value hands. Bluffing is certainly in this guy's arsenal, especially considering that he was on his third or fourth buy-in. The most obvious bluffs seem to be queen-jack, two over cards and a straight draw, or maybe eight, seven. Aside from that, not really much else. The problem with our exact hand is we have some removal to strong hands, but also some removal to weak hands, like eight, seven, which could be in this guy's range here. After thinking about it for a really long time, I decided to make the hero call here and pretty much go with it unless queen jack or some other straight draw completed. Now the hand gets even crazier when the guy behind me decides to shove all in for around $350. The reason this is just never a good hand is because he called the $25 bet on the flop after multiple callers. If he had any kind of strong hand, he would just be putting in a raise himself. 
This guy's line is just 100% a draw every time. The guy who check raised to 150 goes all in for his last 200. And I think at this point, we've already made up our mind. Pretty sketchy spot because even against Queen Jack, it's a flip with two overs and a straight draw. But given how much is in the pot, we don't have to be good all that often to make this a plus EV play. Sounds a bit crazy, but all that spiel is what was going on through my head at this moment in time. So all in three ways with second pair, no kicker, off to see turn and river. Not even sure where we stand in the hand, but uh, you know, you gotta go with your gut sometimes. The turn is an offsuit three, which is a great card, making pocket threes even less likely. And the river is an ace. Both of my opponents seem very hesitant to show their cards. So when this happens, I usually just turn mine over. Show the 9-7, and both of my opponents show 8-7 offsuit for a naked straight draw. No way! So somehow, even though it could have gone either way, the read was correct, and we scoop a ginormous pot with a garbage hand. I could hear you guys through the screen passing judgment. You know what? I don't even blame you. So after that 9-7 of diamonds adventure, we managed to get all the way unstuck. Actually up around 2 or 250 at this point. However, we get no playable cards for a while until finally there's an early position raised to 20, a caller on my right. I look down at pocket nines and make the call. The player on my left, three bets to 100. Everyone folds and I decide to make the call being that we're both pretty deep here and we can still be ahead a good amount of the time. Flop comes down, jack, jack, seven, rainbow. I check, he checks it back. Turns an offsuit 10. I check once again, he checks it back. The river is a brick. Checks through once again and we win versus ace queen. So scoop up a nice little pot there. Shortly after that, I open ace jack from early position over a limper. The player on my left makes the call as well as the button, big blind and original limper. So five ways to a flop here. Comes down king jack four rainbow. No reason to put in a bet here. I decide to check it. Player on my left checks and button checks. So checks through on the flop. Turn is an offsuit five. Once again, checks all the way through. River comes a three. Action checks to me once again. And even though I'm pretty sure we have the best hand here, I think there's actually more value in just checking it and possibly letting a player behind us put in a stab with either some thin value that we beat or just turn their hand into a bluff. So that's what I decide to do. The player on my left does put in a bet. Not too big though, makes it $40. Everyone folds when the action gets back to me. Pretty straightforward call, and we beat pocket tens. So I think that's max value. Anyway, that wrapped up the session for us. At this point, it was around six or seven hours. Managed to turn things around, and at the very least, get some fun hands for the vlog. It's the next day, recap time. Before I forget, which I often almost do, the results. I was in for a thousand and out for 1532. So despite the flush over flush over flush disaster, I managed to turn it around and end things on a positive note. Next, I will be possibly visiting a small casino in this city that apparently gets like one or two games going uh, a few times a week. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, subscribe to see the next vlog. Should be interesting at the very least. And I'll see you guys then. Until then, good luck at the tables. Thanks again for watching. 
I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.